Okay, so we've got our basic.json file and we're ready to execute it against our AWS account. We want to build our AMI. So if we look here, if we just type in packer and hit enter, we'll get the, the help page made available to us. And we can see that there are only actually six commands that we can actually run and only five of them actually do something for us. The version one just prints out the version number. It doesn't really do anything with relation to the template itself. So we're going to run two here actually. Uh, we're not going to look at any of the other ones in this course, but we're going to look at the build and the validate. So I'm going to run validate against my template. Template validated successfully. Now this is actually this is actually a very powerful tool, especially in a CI stack, right? Because if you have an invalid template, you want to know that you want to know the syntax before you try and run it or execute it. You want to fail the build within within an automated CI pipeline. So the validate command is actually very, very powerful. It's going to go ahead and validate those things for us. It can also not just validate the JSON, but it can also validate the actual contents of the template on a very kind of granular level. So in this case, it's failed to initialize build Amazon Dash because it doesn't know what Amazon Dash is as a builder. There's no such builder. So effectively what I'm doing here is just breaking this on purpose and you're able to then see that, that the validate command does have does have its uses. So this is a good way of working out why a build, uh, whether, your, whether your file is valid before you go ahead and try and build it. Speaking of building it, let's actually go ahead and do that right now. So we're now gonna run this, it's gonna take a little bit of time. So then I'm gonna fast forward in this video to when it's halted and then we're gonna read through the output. Okay, so I've run, I've executed Packer with the build subcommand, and I've given it the basic.json template file, and that's gone ahead and executed successfully. It's finalized and it's produced an AMI for me. So let's step through what's happening here in the terminal, what we're actually seeing. So this first line here says pre-validating any provided VPC information. Now, if you remember in the basic.json file, we didn't actually provide any VPC information, and that's okay. What it's actually gonna do is it's gonna speak to the AWS AMI and it's going to say, I need a default VPC because I've not been provided with a VPC ID. And my AWS account has a default VPC that Packer can use. So it do, I don't need to create a VPC ahead of time, although I can if I want to, and provide it with a specific VPC ID. And that's probably good practice from a security perspective. In this case, it's actually just gone ahead and got the default VPC information, and it's going to build the EC2 instance, the temporary EC2 instance inside of that VPC. The next line, actually so pre-validating the AMI name, Ubuntu-18-base, what this is actually doing, and we'll see what this is actually doing in a second, I'll rerun this command in a second. What this is actually doing is saying, is that name available in this account? Because AMI names are unique within an account. So if it already exists, this will fail, as we'll see. And then it's saying Amazon EBS, it's a found image ID. Now that's the that's the original image ID that we're using to base our right, our image off of. Okay, so like I said, it's like chicken and the egg, what comes first? In this case, Amazon Web Services are providing us with the egg in the form of a pre-existing Ubuntu image, and we're gonna build another image on top of it, and we're gonna improve it enhance it and configure it to our standards in some way, shape or form. So this is f and saying that it's found the ID that we've given it. So we've successfully given it the correct AMI ID. So what we've got here is creating a temporary keeper and then it's got a big random string. It looks like a UUID V4 string. So creating a temporary keeper. So you'll notice that I said earlier in the basic.json file, we're providing it with the SSH username of Ubuntu. But how did we how do we know what the password is? How does Packer know what the password is? Well the answer is when we spin up an EC2 instance in AWS, we tell we tell AWS what keeper to use. And so what Packer's doing here is generating a, a a temporary SSH keeper. It's embedding them into AWS, or rather it's asking AWS for a keeper and then it's downloading the secret key. Then what it's going to do, it's giving it the name. It's the name of the keeper is that big long name there. And then when it comes to create the EC2 instance, it says, create this Linux box and I want you to use this keeper called Packer and then the big long string there. 
that enables Packer to use the Ubuntu username and the private key that it's downloaded from AWS to then SSH into and access the system. Because we didn't provide Packer with a security group ID, it's gone ahead and created one for us. So we can see here creating a temporary security group for this instance. And then we have a very similar format to the above string. We've got Packer and then a random string. So Packer's also gonna need to be able to SSH into this system and it doesn't know whether the rules that the default rules that you're going to provide are going to allow that. So instead, it's going to create a security group, which it's going to attach to the instance, enabling it to SSH. And we can see that on the next line down here. It says here, authorizing access to port 22, that's the SSH port, from 000 slash zero. So that that is everywhere. That's the global internet, essentially. That's basically saying match any any inbound IP address. And it's attaching that rule to the temporary security group, which will be attached to our temporary EC2 instance. And this will allow Packer to SSH into the system. Okay, so what we got next, I'm just gonna scroll up a little bit just to get that text at the top of the screen. There we go. We've got launching a source AWS instance. So as I said earlier, the Amazon EBS builder type will build an EC2 instance with an EBS volume and then it will provision it and then it'll snapshot that instance and that's where we get our AMI from. What it's also doing here is adding tags to it as well so that if someone in in the AWS console sees this image come up, they'll see here that it's called Packer Builder and it'll know why that image, why that EC2 instance exists and so they won't panic. What we then get is the actual instance ID. So it's gone ahead and built an instance and then there's the instance ID that Amazon's come back. Now it's come back with that pretty much instantly because it's just gonna give you an instance ID pretty much straight away, but that doesn't mean the virtual machine is available instantly. And so here we can see that it's now waiting for that instance to become available. It's gonna use the SSH communicator to talk to the public IP address of that instance. And then it's gotta wait, sit and wait for the SSH port to become available for it to connect to using the private key we talked about above, using a Ubuntu username. Now we can see that it's successfully connected, and then it automatically stops the instance. Now that's because we don't have any provisioners, so we're gonna look at a more advanced solution as we go through time. In this case, there's no provisioners in place, so what actually happens here is it goes, well, there's no further work for me to do, so I'm, I'm ready to now produce an AMI. So now what it does is it stops the instance, it waits for it to come to a complete stop, and then it creates our AMI based on the instance ID. See that there, I've got highlighted just, just above my head. And then we can see that that matches this one up here. Okay, and so eventually we end up with an AMI ID, which it then waits to be, meet the ready state. So AMIs need to, they need time to compute and actually become available. Then once it's available, it then terminates the instance because we don't need it anymore cleans up any extra volumes that I had to create. It doesn't have any because we haven't specified any. It then deletes that temporary security group, deletes the temporary SSH key pair. It's then finished and we end up with our Amazon machine image ID here. And now we can use that image to either build more AMIs or to start building actual servers. So I said earlier that what we would do is we'd rerun this command to see what happens because like I said, our AMI name is a static name. So let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. And now we can see here that we have, that, we have this line here again, pre-validating the AMI name, and then we've got our static name. And then it's actually come back with an error saying that the name is already in use by an existing AMI and then it gives us the ID. And so it's unable to create the AMI for us because we're using a name that already exists. So we can either change the name or we can actually delete this AMI. Now I'm gonna go ahead and actually delete this AMI right now. So I'm gonna bring up a previous command I've got here, which is just the AWS command line interface. I'm gonna access the EC2 subcommand and I'm gonna deregister the image based on this image ID. And so AWS will go ahead and delete that for me. So if I rerun this command now, which I'm not going to do because it takes takes quite a long time, I'm going to get successful results. I'm not going to see that error because the, the name, the AMI name is now available. 